Just spoke in that session. The chairman of that session was Professor Hassana Alidu, who is the director of UNESCO Regional Office, Abuja. In that session, in particular attention was paid to accessibility to education. Now, the keynote address was delivered by Mr. Christian Rock, an acting head, Department for International Development, Nigeria. He talked about building a learning system that gives access to everyone. Most of what he talked about, basic points raised, reduction of costs, improvement of sanitation, accessibility, and security so that everyone that comes to school is secure. They are sure that they are participating in what is needed. They are sure that what they are coming there to get is going to help them in the future. The other thing that was talked about was value orientation. Value orientation. Right now, I'm going to be speaking to one of the private sector players, the chief executive officer of the Stambic IBTC Bank, if she could join us here so that we could find out what exactly her plans are. She's one of those, firm, one of those firms that, are cons that have been known to be dedicated, committed to human capital development. Okay, she's coming now. Hello, Mark. Good to have you here. Now, some of the things I've heard here today point to the fact that the private sector really has a major role to play in moving the education sector forward. Now, your company is known to be seriously interested in human capital development. Now, what, what would you take away from here? Yes, you are correct that um, the private sector is a major stakeholder in education. Um, the education, the schools, universities, you know, they feed us with the human capital we need to deliver on our performance. Stambic IBTC um, has done a number of um, things to date, including adopting a primary school in Lagos State. But there is much more than we can do. Um, some of the ideas that have come forward about giving scholarships, for instance, um, for those who want to specialize in education, is an important area. Um, also in terms of student loans. Okay, so putting in place some kind of facility that um, is easy for students to access, you know, is another area that certainly the banks can take up. So, you know, there, there's a lot to do. Um, the issues in education are beyond the stakeholders who are in education to solve. You know, private sector has to come in um, and participate actively. The other thing the private sector can come through is actually investments. And we've seen a couple of private equity firms who have already invested in, um, in education. I am aware that Actis, for instance, have invested um, over $200 million, you know, in universities in Brazil, in China, and certainly something that um, we can get private equity firms to also um, do in Nigeria. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, my colleague Harriet Agbe is, is, is here as well. She'll be interviewing one other guest at this event. We're handing over now to Harriet for another interview. As you know, this session has just ended, the, fifth, the sixth plenary session has just ended. And joining me now in the studio is the Chairman, Senate Committee on Education, Senator Uche Chukumirije. Thank you so much, Senator, for speaking with us Great this time. afternoon. Now, this session has been on for the last couple of hours. Yeah. And for most of yesterday and even today, what we noticed is that everybody keeps saying that uh, the policies are good, but uh, the willpower to implement it. Now, you're the chairman of, Sen of, of the Senate Committee on Education. And um, we know that as contained in the Constitution, every Nigerian has a right to education. So looking at what we have heard most of the speakers you know, talk about today, is enough being done to ensure that all Nigerians actually have have this education and after this summit are we going to see all those policies that um, have come out as regards education being implemented well the first question is quite a thorough order the government of the day is doing a lot 
probably more than all his predecessors in terms of uh, quanti quantity, in terms of access to education, like creating 12 universities at a go, that is almost unprecedented in the world. Uh, like what you do on major, major education too. But is that really education? Because two things should worry us. One, the scope of access to education in terms of knowledge. Two, education in terms of its functionality and value. In terms of knowledge, it's neither here nor there. As you can see from uh, the quality of most of our graduates, Produce in terms of functionality is nil. As you can see from this conference, and that's really what prompted the Nigerian economic community to go into this conference in the first instance, there is a new functionality with regard to our education. That is complete disconnect between what is being taught in the classroom and what economy requires outside, what industry requires outside what the private sector requires outside, what society requires outside. Mm. So this sorry, is so, so, sorry to, to cut you here, Senator. So if that's the case, as much as possible, it seems that um, the technical and vocational education institutions should now begin to champion this course that we're expecting to see where we have graduates who will come out with the requisite skill to become not just um, employees, but employers. That is exactly the main challenge facing us today, to get the government to try to heal this disorientation. It is not easy. One, the salary scale, the career progression, is skewed very much against skill acquisition. You find somebody with BA, blah, 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 in fine arts or whatever, is rated higher than someone with HND in a practical area people want. We've been fighting for this for years, but the least you can do is in terms of career progression, bring them to the same level. And if we had the way, it should be a bit above. Then beyond that, perhaps as a result of this, the social respect and social regard is higher for those with this kind of university education than those with skill vocational, technological education. So now it behoves on legislature, le the legislature. No, it doesn't behoves on us. At least mm. to pass a bill or to ensure that the, the technical or vocational um, certificates are also um, put on the same pedestal. Because it seems as if there's more <laughs> emphasis on people getting certificates. And so a lot of people prefer to go to the I wish I wish it yeah. were something we can do with legislation. Unfortunately, we have to affirm this point, this fact. Education, you make laws. I'm oh, sorry, legislation, you make laws. The executive implements the laws. We've made legislations on honored salary equity for these technological, technical uh, graduates. Till today, it's not being implemented. What do you do? We've carried the cases of now let me just give an example. The polytechnics have been on strike, almost getting to a year now, about seven months on strike. For only one little basic thing, what they call this 15, give us equity in salary structure and all that. Huh. Government say yes in principle, and one of us say yes. I, as chairman of uh, education committee, have led delegation to so many of these people important this is not implemented. But what do you do? You can pass a resolutions, you can pass your bills, but who will implement? Even bills, if you pass your bill, it has to get the consent of the president to become law. Even when it becomes law, somebody has to implement it. Senator Uche Chikumirije, thank you so much for speaking with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Well, I've been speaking with the Chairman Senate Committee on Education, Senator Uche Chikumirije, and his meeting.
quite some insightful points. And uh, as you know, it's one thing for you to make this laws. It's another thing for you to implement it. And that's what most of the participants at the summit have been saying since the summit started yesterday. It's good that we have these policies in place, but there's no real power to implement it. And just like the senator actually mentioned, there's so many ways that uh, the government should be able to, to go about implementing all of these policies. But Nyota is still standing by. Over to you, Nyota.